Okay. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to do today is, well, first of all, we're going to continue with the logistics regression, right? No, 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 logistic, no F. Logistics is moving things in supply chain, right? Logistic is a little bit different. Okay, uh, but first, uh, let's kind of revise our map of tools, okay? Uh, I gave you this handout some time ago, right? You're supposed to still have it. Believe it or not, so far this semester, we actually covered only a handful of topics. Uh, specifically, we, we talked a lot about classification tree when you're predicting categorical variable, right? And your independent variables can be either continuous uh, or categorical, either way, okay? Uh, also, we discussed regression tree which is essentially a similar model, right? It builds you the tree structure. You start with the entire data set and then you start branching uh, the entire data set into subsets based on some variables, right? On some criteria, okay? So you try to predict continuous variable. And I believe the example that we used in class was predicting the price of the diamond based on the carrot weight, the cut, color, uh, how clean is the diamond, right? The, the quality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we dedicated a lot of time to discussing. This is the like tenth time today, or something like that. So all of a sudden, telemarketers start calling. You know what I did uh, in the previous class that I taught today? Uh, uh, like typically, I, I don't have patience with these people. I'm not nice on the phone with them. Okay, but somebody told me try speaking Russian with them. Okay like foreign language, and that's what I did actually. So they called about an hour ago, somebody else from New York, and I just, you know, started to talk Russian. They hung up on me after like a minute. <laughs> that was fun. All right, I'm going to keep doing that, okay? Uh, so, uh, we discussed a regression uh, analysis, right? Multiple linear regression. So, we started off by, uh, remember the, the problem that we did Predicting the model, uh, the price, the price of the car, used car, right? And we started off very with, with, with a very simple model, right? We said, let's use mileage as the predictor, right? So our predictor variables was uh, continuous, okay? Uh, and then we said, let's add age and horsepower to the mixture, right? Still continuous variables. Remember what we did in the previous class. We did same exact model when we uh, used not only age mileage and horsepower, but we also used type of fuel that the car is using, right? And that was either gasoline or diesel or natural liquid gas, right? Uh, also the transmission type, manual versus automatic, right? And also the color, but we had only two different colors, right? Metallic or non-metallic, everything else basically. These were not continuous predictors. What kind of predictors were they? When you have like manual versus automatic, what type of variable is that? Categorical. Categorical, right? So we basically had nominal predictors. And we still were able to build the uh, linear regression model, right? So what I want to do here is essentially copy that, okay, and bring it over here. So when your, when your uh, target variable, when you're dealing with supervised learning and your target variable is continuous, and the natural model to use, probably the first thing that comes should come to mind is linear regression, right? And we can use that when your when your predictors are continuous, okay, right over here, or when your predictors are categorical, such as color, metallic versus non-metallic, transmission type, automatic versus manual, okay? We still can use multiple linear regression for that, okay? The target is continuous. Predictors can be either continuous or categorical, or both. It can be a mixture, right? In fact, that's what we had in our previous um, previous problem with, with the cars, right? Age and mileage are continuous. Transmission type and the fuel type are categorical, okay? All right, so our matrix starts to fill up. Okay, so what we're going to do today is, oh, we, we started that essentially in the previous class, uh, switch gears back <coughs> uh, to the case when your target variable is Categorical, okay? So far we know only one way how we can uh, predict categorical classification, right? And that's the classification tree. So a reminder what we did is uh, we, we looked at multiple different examples, right? One of them was completely useless from the data analytics standpoint, but nice to illustrate things. Titanic, right? 
predicting who will survive and who will die on Titanic based on age, uh, class that they traveled, and gender. Right? That was a tree. And then we predicted who will buy the lawnmower versus not buy the lawnmower based on income and the lot size. Right? And then we, right now, you were working on the project where you are doing what? What are you predicting? Flights, right? Delayed versus non-delayed flights, right? So, and that's based on a lot of different uh, predictor variables, such as, for example, flight number, day of the week, when the flight uh, takes place, right? Where it's flying from, where it's flying to, uh, when the flight departure time is scheduled, how large is the distance of the flight, what are the weather conditions, right? Is it sunny or is it raining slash snowing? So, <clears throat> you, you're doing this, uh, hopefully, using the classification tree. At least I hope so, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, today we're going to start looking at the uh, logistic uh, regression, okay? <clears throat> and I believe in the previous class, where we finished, was actually kind of a review, right? I told you that in order to... Uh, uh, in order to... Well, let, let's actually... Uh, approach that from a different angle. I believe the example that we looked at was uh, Universal Bank, right? So let's go ahead and fire up our um, jump, okay? And Universal Bank CT file, which you opened in the previous class. If you don't have it, then it's uh, loaded on Scholar, okay? So in this uh, file, what we're trying to do is we are trying to predict who will, uh, out of the bank's customers, right? Who will agree to the loan when offered, okay? So let's say I have several thousand, 10,000 customers in my bank, okay? I can approach every single one of them and tell them, do you want a loan? Because that's how bank makes money, right? They give out loans and they charge interest rate for the loan. Um, so that's the source of their income essentially. Now the problem is, of course, the majority of people who I will approach will turn me down, right? Uh, likely, when the person needs a loan, they will, will get a loan. Okay, I'll let you know. But when uh, nobody wants the loan to be pushed on them. But still, it's possible that if I approach some of the customers, they will likely accept the loan, right? And what I want to do is, is to build a model that will allow me predicting which customers will accept the loan versus the ones that will turn me down. Okay, so essentially, again, I'm dealing with classification, right? So coming back to our tool matrix, I'm dealing with supervised learning where my target is categorical, right? So I'm back into, into this uh, area, into this column. So specifically, in this example, uh, the target is right here, okay? It's the column called personal loan, yes or no. So uh, here, did she or he accept an offer for a personal loan? So assumption here is, as a bank manager, I'm sending, I don't know how I offer them loans, maybe calling them, probably not a good idea, right? Hey, do you want a loan? Prank call, right? Or something like a telemarketer call. Um, so probably I'm going to send them a letter that says, hey, you can get a loan from me, or simply a postcard, right? Shorter than a letter, easier to throw away, so to speak. Uh, so this is my target variable, and target variable has, uh, we discussed it, right? It, uh, if you kind of double click that and say value labels turn them off, then you will see that my data really is zero, 01, right? My target variable. Zero means that they didn't accept the loan when offered. One means they did accept the loan. And what we discussed is, because my target is numerical, I can fit my good old friend linear regression, right? Target is numerical. Let's build linear regression. Problem is, my linear regression will go from minus infinity to plus infinity. It's a line, right? But what I'm trying to model really is zero, 01. That's what I want to do, okay? And what we discussed is the way how it's done is like this. Uh, through the, well, let me go back here, logistic function, right? Logistic function, essentially, if my x can take any value from minus infinity to plus infinity, just like linear uh, regression. It's a, it's, it's a line, right? It goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Covers the entire interval, okay? Uh, that will be converted into the y, all right? And, uh, but uh, you can see that e to the power of minus x is the essential part of that, right? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and discuss. I believe we started, we didn't finish this thing, right? 
So let me switch to black pen right there. Okay, uh, I believe this is what we figured out in the previous class, right? We said that if your x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, then e to the power of x, hold on, let me make it, yeah, like this. Okay, cool. Uh, e to the power of x, first of all, e, the base for the x, this is called exponentiation function, right? Exponent. The e is the number, right? And that number, I believe, is 2.7182, um, something like that. So if you round it to two uh, decimal figures, you can think of that as 2.72, okay? <laughs> That's number e. Should I put that on the quiz? No, 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 you shouldn't. What's the value of e and also what's the value of pi, right? Something like that. If you know that from the top of your head, right? I don't know. We'll see. Anyhow, uh, uh, we established that if you take any number and raise it to the power of zero, you will get what? A one. one, right? Any number to the power of zero is one. So therefore, the function goes through this point, right? Zero, one, okay? Uh, and if x is positive, then essentially you're raising 2.72 to the higher and higher and higher power. So if you raise it to the power of one, that becomes what? 2.72, right? So here is your 1, here is your 2.72, right there. So the function goes like that, okay, in the positive area. If you go into the negative x, that uh, becomes lower and lower and lower, so it approaches the horizontal line, but never crosses that line, okay? So it goes to uh, minus infinity. The function is getting very, uh, very, really, really small, okay? e to the power of x. So this is e to the power of x graph, but it never touches the 0, so it's never 0, okay? All right, so this is how e to the power of x looks. So let's switch back to our logistic function, and let's kind of explore it, okay? Yeah, so here's my logistic function. Okay, so what happens if my x, and this is my x, right? If x becomes very large, let me raise that thing. I don't know why it doesn't fit the screen right now. Yeah, what happens if my x here, right? Okay, so I'm going to, let's say, minus infinity first, okay? If x goes to minus infinity. So e, uh, my, my uh, uh, logistic function, y, becomes 1 plus e to the power minus, minus infinity, right? Like that. So minus and minus gives me plus. So how much is e to the power plus infinity? We just looked at the function, right? If x goes to plus infinity, that's ugly, right? Plus infinity, then e to the power of x goes to where? Positive. positive infinity as well, right? It goes to positive infinity. Okay, cool. So therefore, here, right? If x goes to minus infinity, e to the minus x goes to e to plus infinity, that goes to plus infinity, right? Boy, goes to plus infinity, so 1 divided by plus infinity gives you what? 1 divided by a really huge number, 0, right? So therefore, if x goes to minus infinity, your uh, y, logistic function, is practically 0, right? Well, let's look at another extreme. Okay, let me raise all of that. What if x goes to plus infinity on the other end of the spectrum? And what you have is 1 plus e to the power minus infinity, right? Whoops. How did that happen? Okay, what happens to the e when x goes to minus infinity? e to the power minus infinity is... e to the power minus infinity is hmm? no, here this is e to the power of x what happens if x goes to minus infinity it goes to zero, right? agree? function goes to zero, okay? <laughs> alright, cool so therefore, that one essentially is zero, right? 
if x is getting larger and larger and larger, e to the power minus x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So essentially, in the limit of really high numbers, you have 1 divided by a number which is 1 plus little something, right? So therefore, the whole ratio goes towards what number? If that part goes to 0. 0. You have 1 over 1, essentially, right? Which is 1, okay? So therefore, what we have here is, here is your 1, okay? So when x is getting really high, this is what you have, right? Okay, cool. All right. So now let's take a look at another one. What if x equals to 0? Let me erase all that. All that nonsense. What if x equals to 0? Then I have 1 over 1 plus e to the power of 0. How much e to the power of 0? 1, right? Okay. 1 divided by 2, 1 half, right? So this is 1 right there. This is 1 half, 0.5, okay? And the function should go through 0.5. So therefore, this is how my function looks like, okay? That's the graph of the function y equals 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus x, okay? So that's how a uh, logistic function looks like. This is the graph, okay? Sometimes logistic function is also called sigmoid function. Why? Because it has kind of S shape. So if you look at the function, it looks like this, right? That's kind of how it looks like, right? zero on this end and one on this end. So therefore, sometimes logistic function is also called sigmoid, sigmoid function. Okay? Just because it looks like S, kind of flattened out, really elongated S, right? Okay, cool. So you can see what happens, right? It takes the entire range of x's from minus infinity to plus infinity, and it essentially maps this range of minus to plus infinity onto the range from 0 to 1, right? Because that's what the function takes, anywhere between 0 and 1. And that's exactly what we're trying to model in this problem, right? When we're talking about who will take the loan from the bank and who will decline the loan from the bank, that is essentially what I need to model, right? Zeros and ones. Zero if I turn it down, one if I accept that, okay? So that is essentially how the model is being built, okay? But uh, not quite like that. Uh, hold on, let me uh, start another one. So this is my logistic function, one over one plus e to the power minus x. So now what I'm going to do is instead of x, I'm going to use a linear regression, okay? So essentially, here is the model that I'm trying to build. Let me kind of write it down over here in a bigger version, okay? 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus logistic, uh, the, the, the simple, not simple, multiple linear regression, okay? So I have beta 0, my intercept, right? Plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2. How many variables, independent variables x I can have in my equation? As many as I want, right? So, least goes forever. And the last one is beta k times xk, okay? So, this is our good old friend multiple regression, agree? Which we just uh, studied, okay? So, if you take multiple regression and do this conversion with multiple regression, it will get you the values between 0 on one end and 1 on another end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, why this uh, model is called logistic regression. Because we're, we're using combination of two things. Logistic function... Right? and linear regression in order to predict categorical variables, 0 or 1. And that's probably the most frequently uh, application, 0 and 1. Okay? This model is pretty powerful and very popular, I got to tell you. Okay? So this semester, we're studying actually the models which have big application in the world of data analytics. So things that we learned so far, they are champions, essentially, of analytics world. Okay? All right, so, well, now let's, let's start slow, so to speak, right? Uh, let's go ahead and do the, do the regression. Well, first thing, uh, what I wanted to point out is uh, we're using the same platform, okay? Same uh, option, which is called fit model for the simple regression or multiple regression or logistic regression, okay? 
And the uh, jump is actually smart enough to recognize um, what kind of problem we're dealing with. So uh, don't do anything. I'll, I'll do a I'll do certain trick, okay? So let me bring up my good old file Toyota Corolla. Remember when we predicted the price? That was done through the multiple regression, right? So look what happens when I start uh, my model. Uh, right here, I didn't point that out to you back then. Now it's time, okay? Right here, we have the uh, drop-down box that says personality. You see that one? And you can see that there are multiple different ways how the model can be run. So the, every single one of these essentially is an algorithm for the jump to build a model, okay? When I'm dragging the price, which is a continuous variable, into the Y field, immediately it says, I'm going to use standard least squares. That's what happened to us before when we built this model, okay? I didn't point that out, but I'm doing it right now. Uh, standard least squares is the, mo is the method to build the multiple regression. Okay? That's a standard way to approach multiple regression. Now, I'm going to close this thing and switch back to the file that we're trying to deal with right now. Okay? Personal loans, 0, 1. Completely different problem, right? I'm not predicting the price, which is continuous. I'm predicting a response. Take the loan or reject the loan. And I'm going to use the same exact uh, option, fit model. And look at that. Personality is empty, just like before, right? But once I drag the personal loan con uh, categorical target variable, right, into the Y area, it immediately says, uh, what does it say? Nominal logistic, okay? Nominal because it's 0, 1, right? It's not, um, yeah. So, uh, it basically, what, what jump does is, depending on what type of, uh, of variable you place into the Y area, what's your target variable type? If it's continuous, it says, that's, you're trying to predict a continuous uh, target. That means it's a regression. That means we need to use uh, standard least squares method, okay? But if you, if you drag the person alone, which is a categorical variable, it says, yep, you're trying to predict zero or one, true, false, yes, no, male, female, you know, stay in the university, leave the university, uh, accept the loan, reject the loan, default on the loan, continue payment on the loan, that type of stuff, right? And therefore, you're, you're going to use logistic regression, okay? Uh, let's, let's be simplistic for, for the starters, okay? So what do I mean by simplistic? Oh, you know what? Even before we do that, we need to discuss something else. Sorry about that. Let's go back, okay? Just remember, we can't, we can't proceed until and unless uh, we discuss uh, what exactly I'm getting, okay? <clears throat> uh, evaluated. So, uh, let's, uh, let's be simplistic and let's say that for now, uh, the uh, acceptance of the loan or not acceptance of the loan depends only on one variable, okay? So, if I would pick pick and choose any variable out of this. What do you think would be the strongest predictor? Who will take the loan or, and who will turn it down? If, I would, if you would have to guess. Income. income probably, right? If I have high income, I can probably accept the loan and be okay with it, right? As opposed to low income, that becomes, that becomes a burden, right? So if I would have to guess, if, if, if I would ask, like, you know, pick one variable which you think is going to be influencing it the most. I would say it's a personal loan, okay? Uh, I would say it's personal income, sorry. Uh, okay, so therefore, if that's true, then this is what I'm looking to build, right? I'm looking to build a variable y, uh, function y, right? Which gives me one plus e to the power minus slope, no, that's intercept, right? Plus the slope times income, okay? Income. So essentially, when I build the model, the model gives me these two things, right? Beta zero and beta one. That's what I mean by building a model, right? Give me the value of intercept and give me the value of slope. And after that, whatever person, like next person who comes into the door, they have certain level of income. I can plug that income into the equation and calculate the y variable for them, right? Now, true or false, the result is going to be a number between zero and one. When I plug whatever, in this equation and do the computations, the y that I'm going to get is going to be no less than zero and no more than one. True? True, right, we just discussed that. 
logistic function takes the value between 0 and 1, right? So what do I do after that? Well, what I do after that really is I'm going to assign, so let's say I'm getting a value of y equals to 0.75, right? So all, all of my predictions are going to be between 0 and 1. I will never have exactly 0, and I will never have exactly 1. But I need at the end of the day to, to make a decision, right? Is that a one customer who will accept the loan, or is it a zero customer who will turn it down? What do you think I should do if, if I'm calculating 0.75? Should I classify it as a one, a loan acceptor, or zero loan rejector? Acceptor, acceptor why? <coughs> it's close, close to one, right? So values that are close to one, I'm going to say, yep, these are loan acceptors. Close to zero, I'm going to say loan rejectors. What do you think is the boundary between the cutoff value? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Did, uh, deja vu, anybody? We did the same exact thing with what? No, not hypothesis. Classification. classification tree, right? Remember, when, when you end up in classification uh, with, with the final node, final leaf in the classification tree, you're going to have to make the same exact call, right? All things that are finishing in this node, right, are they ones or are they zeros? And we said cutoff is 0.5. If the probability, uh, so essentially what I'm calculating is a probability, right? That the customer will accept the loan or the customer will reject the loan, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, this essentially, therefore, let me write it down, probability, probability, or sometimes data scientists also call it propensity. Probability is the same thing as propensity. Propensity. Propensity to accept a loan or propensity to reject a loan, okay? And the cutoff exactly, uh, uh, like Michael said, is 0.5, default cutoff. Of course, it's up to me, right? I can define it at 0 0.7 or I can uh, bump it down to 0 0.3, right? But 0 0.5 is default. So if I calculate the probability and it's greater than 0 0.5, I'm going to classify it as 1, except alone. If I calculate and it's 0 0.3, I'm going to classify it as 0, likely reject alone, okay? All right. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me do some mathematical <laughs> manipulation, okay? So prepare for the five minutes of boredom. <laughs> so to speak, okay? All right, so here. 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1, right? Okay, so I'm going to do the following thing. I, I, at the end of the day, on the left side, I'm going to, on the right side, sorry, I would like to end up with my linear regression, my good old friend, beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1. Okay? And whatever happens on the left side, that happens on the left side. Okay? So how do I do that? Well, uh, easiest thing to do probably, so, and I'm going to say that I'm not actually com competing, uh, uh, co computing y, I'm computing probability of response 1. Right? That's what essentially I'm doing. Probability that the response will be 1, accepting a loan. Okay? That's what I'm doing. All right, so uh, multiply both parts by numerator, right? How do you unwind the expression? Multiply both parts by 1 plus e to the power minus beta 0 plus beta 1 x1, okay? Right side and left side likewise. So it will cancel out of the right side, okay? And that what uh, you're going to have on the left side. Next step is divide everything by P1, right? So on the right, on the left, I have 1 plus e to the power minus beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 equals to 1 over P. I'm just going to call it P. Not the probability of 1, but P, okay? 1 over P. Okay, subtract 1 from both parts. Minus 1. So that becomes... 1 over p minus p over p, or 1 minus p over p, right? So I have e to the power of this gigantic ugly monster equals to 1 minus p over p, okay? Now I'm going to have to flip it, because minus sign, I don't like minus sign, okay? So take 1 over that, and 1 over that, so that becomes e to the power e to the power plus 
beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 equals p over 1 over p. And finally, how do I get this expression? What's the reverse operation of exponentiation? Square. No. Squaring is square root, right? If you take square and then square root, you're going to get back to your x, right? If I'm getting something e to the power of something, how do I reverse that operation? Logarithm, right? Log, okay? So I'm going to have to take ln natural log of this side and natural log of that side, okay? So that becomes beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1, exactly what I want to get, okay, over here. So that equals to natural log of p over 1 minus p, okay? So essentially it's the same thing as what we started with, okay? What we started with was this one right here. Probability equals to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus uh, uh, mi minus my regression, right? So here, <coughs> that's the equivalent expression, okay? So essentially what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to model this awkward, awkward expression right here, natural log of p divided by 1 over p as the linear function, as the linear regression, right? So let's discuss this ratio, p divided by 1 over p. That is something that's called odds, okay? Odds. Probability divided by 1 minus probability, okay? So odds is just another way to talk about probabilities. When you talk statistics, I'm sure you discussed probabilities, right? So for example, what's the probability when I have a die in casino, I throw the die and it lands on two, for example. What's the probability of that happening? Probability for me getting a reading of getting a two in the casino on one die. Hmm? One out of six, right? can land on six different, uh, six different um, sides, right? Each side is equally likely, so it's one out of six. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's compute the odds for that happening, okay? So uh, P divided by one minus P is, now note that P is the probability of that thing happening, right? And one minus P is probability of exactly opposite, right? One minus P is the probability of that thing not happening. So, therefore, probability of me throwing a 2 on one roll of a die is 1 out of 6. What's the probability of getting something else? 1 minus p. How much is 1 minus 1 sixth? Hmm. Tell me. 5 out of 6, right? Say meow. Okay, 5 out of 6. Okay? So therefore, I cancel this out, and the result is 1 out of 5, right? So if my probability of some event is 1 out of 6, and how do we call this thing again? Starts with O. Odds, right? The odds of this is 1, out, 1 over 5, okay? That means there is 1 chance of that happening versus 5 chances that that's not happening, okay? And this is just another way to talk about the same phenomenon, okay? I can have a probability, or I can uh, recompute the odds, okay? Say, for example, I'm flipping a coin, okay? And let's say I'm looking for the heads, okay? What's the probability of heads on a flip of a coin? One over two, right? If it's unbiased coin, it's one over two. Okay, so... That, uh, that's the probability of success. I'm defining success as getting ahead, right? Let's compute the odds of that, okay? Odds is P divided by 1 minus P, right? It's 1 half. Oops, sorry. 1 half divided by 1 minus 1 half. So it's 1 half, oh, 1 half over 1 half, or 1, right? Oh, let's write it. 1 out of 1, right? 1 over 1. So the chance of that happening is 1, the chance of, versus the chance of that happening one again, right? 50 50, so to speak. What if I'm dealing with. Uh, so you can see that I'm increasing the probability, right? One sixth when I'm throwing one die, one half when I'm dealing with a coin. Let's say something that has a really good chance of happening. 
um, let's say that when I'm throwing a die, I'm looking for one, three, five, or six. What's the chance of that? If I'm throwing a die and anything except two and a four is good to me. One, three, five, or six. What's the likelihood of that? Four out of six, right? Four different possibilities out of six in total, right? Four out of six, okay? So you can see that my probability is increasing, right? From one out of six, I went to one out of two, and that essentially is equal to two out of three, right? Agree? So my, prob my probability is increasing. What happens with odds? Odds were one out of five. Now it's one out of one. Let's, let's compute the odds now, okay? So odds... My new odds are five, uh, 4 out of 6 of throwing 1, 3, 5, or 6, right? Divided by what? 2 out of 6, right? So therefore, 6 and 6 cancel out. 4 by 2, 2 by 1, right? I'm twice... That, that's what this ratio tells me, okay? I'm twice as likely to get 1, 3, 5, or 6 than not to get that, Okay? My chances of success are twice higher than my chances of the failure, okay? So see what happens? My prob if probability is getting higher, what happens with odds? It's also getting higher, right? So odds really is just another way to talk about probabilities, okay? Probabilities and odds, they translate into each other. And by the way, right here what we did is given the probability, we're calculating the odds, right? Let's do the reverse operation, so to speak, okay? If, for example, I don't know, on the quiz or on the exam, I tell you the odds of certain event are 4 versus 1. Something like that, okay? What is the probability of that event? Of the event. So, in other words, what I did before is I was computing odds when I was given the probability, right? Now I'm given the probability. Uh, sorry, now I'm given the odds, right? Can I compute the probability? Sure I can. How? Well, I know that odds is 1, is P divided by 1 minus P, right? And it's 4, according to what I'm given, right? So multiply both parts by 1 minus P. What you have after that is P equals... 4 minus 4p, right? And after that, uh, I leave 4 on the right side, and I move that to the left side, so p plus, what's that, 4p, right? So in other words, 5p equals, uh, oh, that can be right. Yeah, it is actually, yeah. 5p equals 4, right? So therefore, probability equals to 4 out of Five or, in other words, 80% chance, right? So if some event, whatever it is, has 80% chance, it's the same thing as to say odds are equal to 4 versus 1, right? So you're four times more likely to get this event happening than not to get this event happening, okay? Does it make sense? You're awful. Huh, Michael? Where did you get the 5 from? So I took minus 4p with the, with the opposite sign to the right, to the left side. So p was there in the first place. Now, 4p joined the tea party. p plus 4p gives you 5p, right? Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Or not quite? That makes sense. Okay, cool. All right, so essentially, coming back to our equation, right? Coming back to previous one. No, not this one. This one right there. <laughs> what logistic uh, regression does, essentially, is it builds the regression model in order to predict this weird, weird animal, okay? It's the natural log of the odds, right? We just discussed that P divided by 1 minus P, that's something that we call odds of an event. In our case, it's the odds of a person getting a loan from the bank when offered a loan from the bank, right? Well, we still have five time remaining. We want to see it happening. Okay, let's do it, right? So here is my file. All right, and let's just simply build the regression, logistic regression in this case, right? So I'm going to use the same good old uh, 
uh, menu right there, fit the model, okay? Uh, my personal loan is going to be the target variable and immediately Jump says, aha, uh -huh, I see, you're telling me that this is a categorical target and because we're dealing with fitting the analytical model, it's going to be a logistic model, okay? And uh, like I said, we're going to be simplistic for now, right? We're going to say, let's just use income as the single biggest predictor. Probably it is, I'm guessing. So I'm going to add that, simple as that. And one more step. Sometimes people forget that during the exams and quizzes, okay? For the logistic regression, I have two different things that I'm trying to predict. It can be probability of zero, not getting a loan, or probability of one, getting a loan, okay? Uh, by default, right there, target level is zero, okay? But that's not what I want really, right? I want to predict the likelihood that the person will accept a loan when I approach him or her, right? So therefore here I'm going to have to switch from zero to one. You can leave it at zero, but then you have to remember that what you're predicting really is the likelihood of not getting a loan, right? Turning it down from the bank, okay? It's much easier if I keep it clean, right? <laughs> like this. Probability of getting a loan, that's my, that's my objective. And when I run it, there it is. And look at that. It even gives you a nice, how do we call this shape again? Start sigmoid, right? Sigmoid shape, okay? You can see that here is one. We just discussed it, right? Here is one, and it approaches one, but never really gets one, right? And here is zero. Well, this is a misleading picture because it looks like it's hitting zero, right? No, it doesn't, okay? Mathematically, it does not. It's getting really close to zero, but not quite there. Okay? Now, of course, the most important thing that I can get out of that is my parameter estimates, right? And there it is. Simple model. What do we need for that? Two things, right? Uh, that would be intercept beta zero and the slope beta one. And they are right there in front of you. Here's your intercept, ladies and gents. And here is your slope for the income. Okay? So, here is my model. Now, let me write that down for you, okay? Minus 6.1 to 7, oh, how do I remember that? And 0 0.037, okay. So my model is, in order to predict the probability of getting a loan from the bank, P of one, right? All I have to do is do this, one divided by one plus e to the power minus, minus 6.127, is it? Uh huh, and plus zero point. What was the number? Uh, zero point zero three seven. Zero three seven times what? Income. Income, right? That is my equation, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. After that, all I have to do: a person comes in with a certain level of income. All I have to do is plug it in, and that will spit me out the probability. How likely? Or propensity, we discussed it, right? Probability is also called propensity of getting this thing or not getting this thing, right? So the equation will spit me out how likely is that person to get a loan from me when offered or not to get. Oh, uh, how much time do we have? Minute. One minute. Okay, let's have an early dismissal today. Okay, so that's it for today. On Wednesday, today is Monday, right? On Wednesday, we're going to make it more difficult, make it more challenging and complicated, we're going to add more aspects of the reality to the model, right? Income probably is not the only thing that's important, I'm guessing.